hey, has your sled got lights that aren't working or a gas gauge that's not reading? Does your ATV have a winch that's not winching? Welcome to the club. If you're going to own an older machine sooner or later, you're going to have to figure out an electrical problem. You know, even if you take great care of them, these old machines take a lot of abuse. They run over logs, they hit potholes, they heat up, they cool down. And all those wires and fuses and connectors, they take quite a beating. And eventually those parts just wear out. You know, and if you've got an older machine, then previous owners have made repairs, done modifications, added accessories. Some of them have done it right. Others have been a bit more creative. So electrical problems will have you pulling your hair out at the best of times. But if you don't have a multimeter, you're pretty much limited to just replacing the parts you think it probably is until you get the right one. So if you want to hang out for a bit, I'll give you a look at a couple of different types of meters. I'll show you how to use them to test for AC and DC voltage, current, resistance, continuity. And as I go, I'll explain how I could use each test to solve a problem on the sled or ATV. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, my name is David Clark. This is my old sled. All right, the first thing you want to do is grab a multimeter. And there's a ton of different ones on the market. You can get them from Amazon, Canadian Tire, Harbor Freight, Princess Auto. I would say anywhere from $40 to $70, maybe you can get a half decent meter to work on the sled with. You know, maybe a little over 100 if you got a bit more of a budget. But that's a guess. And obviously you got to buy within your budget. The only thing I will point out, I mean, I bought this little cheap one. I don't even use it anymore. So it's not a bad little entry level meter, right? If you only have $20 to spend, it'll get you started. It'll test for AC and DC voltage. It'll test for current resistance, continuity. Um, it's just a matter of quality. Remember, electricity is dangerous. You can damage the sled or worse. Now, I'm not an expert. I'm just a nerd with a sled. So don't do what I do and watch where you're sticking your probes. All right, first off, let's talk about measuring voltage. So if you think about plumbing, then voltage is kind of like pressure. It's the force that pushes the electrons around the circuit. Now, there's two types of voltage. AC, or alternating current, and DC, or direct current. AC voltage is what you find in your house wiring in the outlets. And it's also what's generated by the magneto and stator in your sled or ADV. So it's called alternating current because the flow of electrons changes direction periodically. Now, one of the differences between this 670 and the rev is this only has AC. You'll actually get more than 12 volts out of your stator. So the higher you rev the engine, the more you get. You could get 24, 30, or even higher. Now that kind of voltage will damage electronics, blow light bulbs. So we have a voltage regulator on the sled that keeps that voltage down below 15 volts. So if your lights are flickering or you're blowing light bulbs, you might want to check how much voltage you have. Or you may just want to see if there is voltage, like if your winch isn't working on the ATV or the heated shield on your helmet's not working, you want to just see if there's voltage there. All right, the first thing I want to do is make sure the leads are in the right place. So on this one, I've got choices. Some of the other meters I have, I don't. They only go in one way. So you're always going to put the black on the one labeled common, so that's your ground or common. And then the red, you might have a choice between, so for this one, I have voltage and resistance, and then I have another choice for amperage. So next up, we need to select AC voltage. So we're looking for a V and for AC we want the little wavy symbol. So you want to select a range above what you expect to see. So this is 12 volts so I'm going to select 20. Some meters are auto ranging you don't need to worry about it. Now if you're not sure then you can go up even higher than that and come down until you get your two decimal points. Let's say that little beeper isn't working on this sled when I put it in reverse. I need to figure out do I need to get a new beeper or is it just not getting any power? So you should see somewhere within that 12, 12 and a half to 14 volt range, depending on whether the sled is at idle or whether you're giving it some throttle. So with the sled running, I need to put the red probe on the red wire, the black probe on the black wire, pop it into reverse and see if I've got 12 volt. All right, so I had my 12 volts there. If that backup beeper is not working, then the problem is the beeper, not something else in the sled. Now, if I had no volts, then I would be looking for a blown fuse or a busted wire. Now, if we were doing that test for headlight problem because the lights were flickering or bulbs keep blowing, if you see voltage, but you see voltage below 12 volts or above 15 volts, then the voltage regulator is probably going. Now, let's talk about DC. DC stands for direct current. In DC power, all of the electrons move in one direction. So what's DC? Batteries are DC. So this lawnmower battery, the sports battery in your sled, even little guys like this, they're all DC. 
So why do we want DC on the sled? Well, we want to be able to carry some on board because we want to turn the starter, so we need a battery. We need to be able to charge that battery with our charging system. And certain electronics that have computer chips require the constant flow of DC current. Now, before we get into that, I'll just show you this little unit quickly. This was inexpensive. It was like 20 something dollars on Amazon. The cool thing with this, it's completely automatic, right? So I don't have to set AC or DC. I don't have to set the range. This one is limited. It doesn't have amps, but it does have voltage, continuity, and resistance. So a lot of the testing that you want to do on your sled. So I don't have to do anything. I just turn it on. I put my probes to the terminals and it automatically detects. I'm testing for voltage, DC, and it gives me 12.57 volts. So I haven't done extensive testing, but compared to some of my other meters, I'm not gonna vouch for the accuracy of this one. But I will say at $20, you're probably not gonna be leaving that to your grandchildren. So let's switch back to our regular meter. Now the symbol for DC voltage on a multimeter is a V and a line with three little dots under it. All right, so let's check the voltage on this EarthX battery. It's been sitting on the shelf for a while. So I already know that the resting voltage of this battery is a little bit higher than a regular battery. So it's gonna be 13.5, but still in the same range. So we're gonna put 20 volts DC. I'm gonna put my red probe to positive, my black probe to negative, 13.22 volts. Almost fully charged. Now the other thing with a digital multimeter, thing that's really cool, if I reverse my leads by mistake, so I put red on negative, black on positive, it doesn't damage anything. It actually gives you a little negative on the display. So it tells me that it's minus 12.59 volts. And that's actually handy, and I'll show you why in a second. So this Rev chassis has both AC and DC. So it's got a battery that it uses for its electric start and its fuel injection. So like the 670, it has a stator that generates AC. But instead of a simple voltage regulator, it has a regulator rectifier that regulates the voltage and converts it to DC. Let's do another simple test for voltage. So there's two plugs or jacks on this console. The manual calls it an electric visor jack connector. It's a little RCA port that you plug your heated shield into. So the top one's referenced in the manual. It says specifically there's no voltage there when the sled's not running. But this other one's been added at some point as an accessory. It's just been pulled through the opening for the fuel gauge. So I'm curious about how this has been wired in. Is it wired directly to the battery and is it live when the sled's not running? Uh, and I also want to know which part of the connection is positive and which part's negative. Okay, so I'm going to select DC voltage and I'm going to set it to 20. I'm going to take my black probe and put it in the middle. And then I'm going to touch the outside. So it is live. And I have that little negative symbol on there, which is telling me that my red is on the negative. Okay, so that's voltage. Let's talk about current. Current is measured in amps or amperes. Basically, that's the rate that electricity is moving through the circuit. So back to our plumbing analogy, if voltage is pressure, then current might be something like rate of flow or something you'd express as gallons per minute. But if we're talking about amps, we're talking about how many electrons pass a given point in the circuit in a second. There's a couple of reasons that you might wanna test for current. Maybe I wanna add this light as an accessory on my ATV or my sled, and I wanna know how many amps it draws. Or maybe I come out here a couple of mornings and I find the battery in the rev is dead and I can't get it started. Could be a defective battery, or I could have something called parasitic draw. When I have current that's drawing on the battery when it's not supposed to. All right, the first thing I wanna do is switch my multimeter to amps. So that is just a capital A, and in this case it's DC. Now that is probably going to draw an amp or two, so I'm going to set this for two. So it's always best if you have some idea how much something should draw. If you don't know, there's a couple of things you can do. One, you can check with the manufacturer's website or look at the documentation that it came with. But there's also something called Ohm's Law, and that tells us that the current flowing through a device is proportional to the voltage. The reason I think that is kind of cool is I know that this is an 18 watt light. So you take 18 watts, you divide it by 12, 12 and a half volts, you get about 1.44 amps. Okay, the next thing we want to do is move our leads. So right now I'm plugged into voltage. I'm going to take that and I'll plug it into amps. Now a lot of multimeters will have a setup like this where you've got two different amp jacks. So this one is fused for two amp max and this one's fused for 10 amp max. So that means if you're testing for something more than 10 amps, you're going to blow a fuse in the multimeter. So if you're not sure, put it on 10 amps. All right, so what we want to do, we want to measure the flow of electrons as they go through that light. So to do that, we need to put this multimeter in series as part of that circuit. Now, I would recommend you get yourself a decent set of leads for your multimeter. And if it doesn't come with them, get a set that have clamps. So th these clamps just screw on. It just makes it easier. So I'm going to attach the multimeter to the positive lead on the battery and the positive lead on the light. 
Okay, this is a little bit ugly. It would be nicer if I had this clamped onto this wire as well, but I'm just going to touch the negative terminal on the battery. Current will flow down the positive lead through the multimeter into the positive lead on the LED light. Back out the black lead, come back through this wire, stop my heart, and go back to the negative terminal on the battery. And I have 1.08 amps. If your leads are in good shape and you're not shorting anything with your probes, then you shouldn't very often see anything in the way of arcing or sparking when you're using a multimeter, especially when you're testing for voltage or resistance. But if you're checking for current, you can. So whenever it's possible, you wanna make sure that the meter is turned on and you've got a solid connection with your probes before you energize the circuit. Because technically a spark or an arc can ignite fuel vapor. Gasoline vapors are three to four times heavier than air and they tend to collect in low places. You know what's a great place for gas vapors to collect? Anyone? Now, every meter is gonna be different, so make sure you're paying attention to the markings on it and make sure you're reading the manual that it came with. Now, that method will work okay with lower currents, so most of the stuff on the lighting circuit, a bulb is gonna be like an amp or two. But if you wanna test things that have a higher draw than that, like your starter is gonna draw more than 10 amps, then you might wanna get something like this that has an amp clamp on it. Next, let's talk about resistance, and resistance is the opposition to the flow of electrons through a circuit. So if you think about your plumbing, it would be like a narrow pipe restricting the flow of water. So resistance is measured in ohms, and the symbol for ohms is a little horseshoe. There's a few reasons to test for resistance on the sled. Maybe you think you've got a defective stator. Resistance is one of the things you test. The sending units for the fuel and temperature gauges, they work by varying the resistance in the circuit. Like the temperature sensor for the 670, this changes resistance as it heats up and cools down. Another simple demonstration for testing for resistance is a spark plug. So modern spark plugs have a resistor in them. So this is a BR8 ECS, the R is for resistor. So the resistor is there to protect against electronic interference. That's another reason I just pitch these when they get fouled and put a new one in. But if you wanna test them first, one of the things you test is check them for resistance. Now spark plugs will have 4,000 to 8,000 ohms of resistance. Now I know in this case, this spark plug has around five. So corrosion, vibration, excessive heat can all cause damage to the spark plug or the caps or the wires and end up changing the resistance in that circuit. And when that happens, it can affect your spark. So we want to test the resistance in the center electrode. So on my multimeter, I'm going to select ohms, the little horseshoe, and I'm going to go to the next one up, which is 20,000 ohms. So I want to be careful not to touch anything other than the center electrode. And I have 5.31. When you're checking for resistance, make sure you isolate whatever it is you're checking from the circuit, so disconnect it. The last test is something called continuity, and that's basically just telling you is the wire broken or do you have continuity of flow through that wire. So if the lights on the ATV aren't working, then I could use continuity to test each wire and connector and switch in the circuit for the unimpeded flow of current. Now the symbol for continuity can vary a little bit from multimeter to multimeter. Typically what you see is what I see on this one. It's a little triangle, and next to it is something signifying sound. So it looks kind of like the Wi-Fi symbol, like a sound wave. On this one, it's a musical note. So when your multimeter is turned on and set for continuity, when you complete a circuit, you get a sound. So I've got my clamps on here so that I can attach them. And I've got a tone so that wire is intact. But if I have a break somewhere in my wire, now, I'm not an expert in electrical by any means, but that's how I've used a multimeter to find some of the problems on my machines. Now, you probably won't get called to the sweet hair after checking components in your lighting circuit. There's certain parts of the ignition that give you a heck of a jolt. Take your time, think things out, read the manual that came with your meter. Anytime you're putting these probes on something that you know is live or you think might be, make sure you're keeping your fingers back from the metal ends. So I think that's it for another video. As always, if you found that useful or entertaining, take a second, click that thumbs up. If you haven't already, take a second, subscribe to the channel, click the little bell icon, you get notified when I post a new video. So that's it for this video. I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for taking the time to watch. And I've had a couple, <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that. Let's talk about current. I don't know what that means. Yeah, that kind of, so AC-DC, AC-DC is a band. So AC voltage, anytime you're sticking your probes, <laughs> it just doesn't sound right. <laughs>